with Facebook, Twitter and YouTube and many other social media networks, we frequently give ourselves the impression that we are a very connected culture. But just how connected are we with our new technologies? I wanted to test this out. So I flew to the other side of the world. In June 2013, the International Symposium of Electronic Arts was being held in Sydney, Australia. And I went over there to make a short documentary about it. Yes, I got it! Okay, let's go over it. I'm actually a designer by trade, but an artist by love. So I would say I take the process of design and apply that to the way that I create my art. So this show is probably our favorite one that we've been to tonight. I'll show you our favorite It's one. a sound and light projection but you get to interact with it, so you get to take your shoes off and you get to walk on the screen that they're projecting the image onto. However, because I wanted to test out how connected we are, I also recruited a number of participants who agreed to act as a group of directors for this video. No, we get, we, we got five. The idea was that they would decide what I would shoot, where I would shoot it, and how I would shoot it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got four. It's done. From the UK, this group met for an hour each day for five days. And during this hour, we worked out the best way we could link up in real time between the directors and myself. We had, yeah, all kinds of problems connecting. Sometimes people's connections weren't as good as others. Uh, so obviously we were trying to use our own laptops or computers in that sense. If we went all in the same room, uh, there'd be the lag delay. We probably lost a little bit of thread here and there because the technology did interfere with that process. To me, the technology should be there and we should not be noticed and we should be able to concentrate on the subject in hand, really. ISEA stands for International Society for Electronic Arts and it's, a, uh, it's an ongoing uh, festival, happens every year now um, in different parts of the world and the events entail projects that, uh, um, are, that bring science and art together. This is the Generative Freeway project and it's the idea of a bunch of 3D printers in the gallery building a freeway system. So it's the idea that a set of instructions in the printers builds the part that then builds the freeway system. And so as people come in, they can pick up the parts from the printers or a staging area and then help construct the freeways. This is uh, an artwork which uh, looks at bridging two cities together, so putting people from both cities into a virtual space which really makes them feel like they're connected. 
the red shadows represent the people here in Sydney and the blue shadows, when they're on screen, people from up in Darwin. And they're both in this kind of game environment where they can create music which is broadcast simultaneously in both locations. The problem over the five days was not just the speed of connection, however, but the time difference. Generally, when Australians are awake, the British are asleep, and when the British are awake, the Australians are tucked up in bed. There's a mouse in here with me. He's sitting there in the light of the lamp, looking up at me. There he goes. I can hear him still, scurrying about somewhere under the hay rack. I think he's gone now. I hope he comes back. I miss him already. Good night. Love you. We have uh, usually about a thousand people show up to these events. You might consider them part festival, part uh, academic conferences. If we can teach that, if we teach these rules, we should be able to codify those rules. And uh, how we use spaces in non-verbal communication. He's here to present the fundamentals for my project, The Sound of Memory. The best time we could all make was 10 a.m. in the UK, 7 p.m. in Australia. The day was just starting in the UK, it was ending in Australia. It meant that the directors weren't able to direct in real time but they could make strategic decisions. The time difference obviously is massive because when it's night for him, it's day for us. So we've only got a narrow um, window of time where we can communicate. During the rest of the day, I was hardly ever within reach of Wi-Fi. So for the most part, I was on my own. Because when you're going out getting footage, if you had a kind of live stream of what you were filming, it would have been great to guide you in a certain direction, which would have gave like really kind of rich content to it. I've started a, a public hangout called I See a Swarm. And in the director sessions themselves, we tried several technologies. And that will connect Google Hangouts, Adobe Connect, and even our own video conferencing platform, so Swarm TV. I'm just doing my like test. That. In order to do this project, we had ensured that we had a super fast broadband connection so that we could rely on the fastest connection speeds. 107.84 megabits per second download. And the results from both countries were exceptional. But it was a completely different issue to find the technology to connect live with each other. 35.72 upload. Outside the sessions, we generally used Facebook. Twitter and YouTube to keep in touch. This work is called Sleep Economy. It's a speculation on a future where um, the state of sleep is no longer a rest state. So again, it's looking at um, a world where there's a, a, you know, we are in this sort of global networked data economy and the body in sleep is now seen as a kind of resource within that economy. So instead of us being a physiological re um, state of re recuperation, um, the body in sleep is actually, you know, its biochemical processes and its movements during the night actually being harnessed for some other means which could be for good or evil, um, we don't know. So when we sort of hook into the grid, our body and sleep becomes this other resource.
Originally, when we were founded back in 1988, it was the Inter Society for Electronic Art. We still maintain the E as being electronic, but actually we think of it as emergent. New art forms coming out of this merger between technology and art. It was difficult to find a venue that was fast enough to transfer video. We had uh, a delay you know, going on because of the speed of connection. Um, and that's difficult, I think. That messes up the whole dynamic sometimes of communication because uh, you end up with people talking over each other. It was difficult to negotiate the different time zones. Maybe we got confused over when Jem mentioned afternoon, evening and tomorrow and yesterday, when in fact, when he mentioned yesterday, we could have possibly been in yesterday. And it was also surprisingly difficult to sense the emotions of the person you were connecting with. <laughs> I did feel for Jem, a poor chap, because he, he seemed very tired every time we were kind of talking to him and uh, kind of felt for him because we were telling him what to do. So if he had to attend something he didn't want to, he still went out and filmed it anyway. Overall, we were able to make the film but I think it's fair to say that we're not quite as connected yet as we'd like to think we are.